Hi, this is the Miracle of Tongues, number one. I've decided to read a couple of the testimonies first, and then read the beginning, which tells you the conflicts and difficulties around this whole surprise language thing. It's best to start with the joy. That's what you call good news, thrilling news. Okay, so... This chapter is titled, My Feet Haven't Touched the Ground Since. This is a person whose heart is filled with joy, so much joy. It's like they're, they're not even walking on the ground. The name of this person is Lois Quinsbury, Towson, Maryland. And as I read, uh, sometimes you'll find that I will reinterpret the words that I call Christianese because some of the people who watch this might not be used to Christian language um, and I, I might make a few adaptations here and there please bear with me if I do that I discovered that like the word Yahweh I mean the word the Lord actually is translated to Yahweh through most of the Bible and the word Adonai or the Lord when referring to Jesus it just means master actually uh, a good like wonderful master um, and and the word Elohim which is translated God means the strongest spirit so sometimes when I see the word God I would say the strongest spirit and things like that Dear Mr. Basham, I am writing about your recent request concerning tongues that have been acknowledged as a known language. I recently received my master's degree in music and presently teach school. I gave a vocal recital in connection with my degree and sang three languages in this recital. I have sung at least five languages over the years and I am studying voice with a Jewish lady who was born in Austria. Her mother was an opera star in Austria. She was educated in America and this woman that I am studying voice with is a linguist. She teaches language and she teaches phonetics and can readily recognize many languages. As a result of my receiving the immersion in the Holy Spirit from God, from Jesus, directly from the spirit realm, as a result of my receiving the immersion in the Holy Spirit directly from Jesus, I have been praying for deliverance for a weight problem. She has a problem with her weight. And through fasting and prayer, God has delivered me. I had the conviction I should share my spiritual pilgrimage with my teacher, this lady from Austria, Mrs. Drucker, one morning at my lesson. So she's about to share with her Austrian Jewish teacher, who teaches language and phonetics, and is teaching voice and this lady Mrs. Drucker can recognize many languages so this lady decided to talk about her spiritual pilgrimage so she's talking about her weight loss she's talking about her surprise language experience I had the conviction I should share my spiritual pilgrimage with my teacher Mrs. Drucker one morning at my lesson. This is a very sensible, educated, clear-minded person. Two very clear-minded people. Very wise about language, sitting together. As I shared my spiritual pilgrimage with Mrs. Drucker, she kept asking to hear more until I had shared my experience about the immersion in the Holy Spirit. 
with her, along with the fact that I had spoken in the surprise language. She looked at me questioningly and said, I have heard about that. Do you speak in tongues now? Do you speak in the surprise language now? I answered, yes, she said. Right away she said, what does it sound like? So here's this woman who's a linguist. She wants to hear tongues. She wants to hear the surprise language. And Lois says, Lois says, I had been shy of speaking in tongues in front of people because I was still so new in the experience. Eight months. Then I remembered Father Dennis Bennett sharing that he always gave people the opportunity of hearing the heavenly language. Think about that. When you receive your immersion, like a child showing off their new bicycle or something, it's good, it's logical. It's a reasonable thing to say, hey, listen to this. I remembered Father Dennis Bennett sharing that he always gave people the opportunity of hearing the heavenly language. So I began in faith, and God blessed me with at least a 20-second message in tongues. When I finished, I glanced at Mrs. Drucker. She looked awestruck and was rubbing her arms. Do you know what you were saying? She, sa she asked. I smiled. No, I don't. Never expecting to know. So this lady, Lois, didn't even expect to know or to hear or to have an interpretation of what she was saying because she had spoken for so long and she didn't expect an interpretation. So Lois said to the lady, No, I don't know what I was saying. And she wasn't expecting to ever know what was said, she was saying. Mrs. Drucker says, You are speaking Turkish! And I've got goosebumps going up and down my arms. Then I looked awestruck, Lois said. I was? Really? Then Mrs. Drucker told me about how her father-in-law had given them a Turkish poem a long time ago and how the family had repeated it over and over until they learned it. They learned this Turkish poem. Family memorization is a sweet thing. It's a beautiful thing. Family memorization. I remember it. And I'm realizing I've heard voices speaking angrily against memorization. And I want to break those words. I want to break that curse. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring family memorization up in my life now. Powerfully, again, in a wonderful way. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. John fifteen sixteen. I didn't, you didn't come after me and cling to me and hang on to me and connect with me, says Jesus to his disciples. I chased after you and hung on to you and clung to you and remained connected with you, says Jesus. It's a marriage term. I sought you and held on to you as my own. You didn't seek me and hold on to me as your own, Jesus says to his disciples. I sought you and hung on to you and, and claimed you as my own, says Jesus. 
and I claimed you as my own for a reason, for a purpose. And the purpose is to produce mature fruit, meaning to reproduce yourself, to produce new souls that are mature and deeply in the friendship with God deeply in the friendship with God so that whatever you do in my name my father will grant you and when you produce that mature fruit not any old fruit that hangs on the tree for a little bit and falls off and doesn't become sweet and ripe and good I'm talking about I found you and hold on to you in order that you might become mature and fertilized and produce good, mature, useful fruit. And when you produce good and mature and useful fruit, my Father will answer whatever you ask in my name, says Jesus. John 15:16. Mrs. Drucker told me about how her father-in-law had given them a Turkish poem a long time ago and how the family had repeated it over and over again until they learned it. John fifteen sixteen. You didn't find and connect with me I found and connected with you John 15 16 you didn't find and connect with me I found and connected with you and I connected with you so that you would do a job a purpose John 15 16 you didn't find and connect with me, I found and connected with you. And I connected with you for a purpose, so that you could do a job, so that you could do a job. John fifteen sixteen. you didn't find and connect with me, I found and connected with you. And I found it and connected with you for a purpose so that you would do a job. And the job is to produce fruit that is mature and good. The production of good and mature fruit, both in you and in your life, and then the reproduction in others and other lives. Other souls becoming mature and good friends of God. John fifteen sixteen. You didn't find and connect with me. I found and connected with you. And I connected with you for a job, for a purpose, that you would do something. And the purpose is to that you produce good fruit in yourself and then in others. so that my Father will answer whatever you ask in my name. John fifteen sixteen. You didn't find and connect with me, I found and connected with you, and I connected with you that you would do a job, and that job is to produce fruit in yourself and in others, so that my Father might answer whatever you ask in my name name John 15 16 you didn't come and find and connect with me I came and found and connected with you and I found and connected with you so that you would do a job do a work so that you would do something and that something is to produce produce good and mature fruit in yourself and in others so that my Father will answer whatever you ask in my name. John 15, 16. There's some family memorization. You can do that along with me. That's a fun way to learn.
She then told me about how her father-in-law had given them a Turkish poem a long time ago, and how the family had repeated it over and over until they learned it. She repeated it to me, and as she spoke, I could recognize my tongue, and I was so excited. She recognized what had been coming out of her mouth in the surprise language from the Holy Spirit. Then Mrs. Drucker asked Lois, How has your experience affected your children? She wanted to know. Then I was really able to share with her about the thrilling news of God and God's friendship and about the divine order in the home and the beauty of God's presence in the home. It was a wonderful sharing and as I continue to study with her this semester I'm praying for more opportunity to share about my Messiah. This whole thing happened to me only this past Monday and so you can imagine that my feet haven't touched the ground since we are constantly amazed at how God is moving in our lives. We have been a part of meetings where amazing testimonies of deliverance and wholeness have come to many people. And all these testimonies have been shared. We praise the strongest spirit for his excellent greatness. In the name of Jesus, Lois Quinsbury, Quessenberry, Towson, Maryland. And that concludes The Miracle of Tongues, Part 1.